Hi folks, I, uh, I've tried several times to make a decent video about how I use Dremel tools. This is a um, Black & Decker um, RTX, 35 bucks, and it's, it's cheap, but it works. It, it's probably the best that I, it's the best I've found in that price class. So I buy these. This is my third or fourth one that I've had, maybe fifth. But anyway, I wanted to show you how I use these. This is uh, a diamond wheel. In this video, I wanted to show you some of the tools I use. This wheel, I've bought diamond wheels similar to this, different sizes. Some have little holes around them um, that have different, some have different grits. Um, on eBay and generally pay about 20 cents a piece for them maybe even less when you buy them you know by 25 30 50 of them whatever and I've probably bought uh, wheels these diamond wheels um, from 20 different vendors maybe and they're all different and it's a crapshoot you never know if you're gonna get good ones or not and I don't even know if the vendors have consistent ones anyway but I picked one here that's one of the best I've found now this, these are diamond these are little diamond uh, grit um, and that's uh, I don't know how best to say it soldered on there with nickel or, or put on there with a nickel glue and um, they work very well these things just gobble up steel and you can sharpen carbide with them too. I mean, this will sharpen carbide as well as a stone sharpens steel, believe it or not. But if you're going to sharpen carbide, you want to uh, wear a respirator. You, you should probably even wear a respirator when sharpening steel. Basically, how I use this, I'm not going to turn it on right now because this, I'm using a $10 camera with a one and a quarter inch screen, and I can barely see what I'm doing through it. Um, and I'm wearing eight power glasses. But anyway, you see this is a number two drill. It's about a quarter inch. And it's a split point bit. And um, the way I sharpen these, or change the tips I should say, I grind them into bullet tips. That's one of the very common uses I do with these. I grind bullet tip drill bits for cutting dies and molds. A lot of pit people make D bits for cutting molds, which are very simple to make, actually. Um, but it takes quite a bit of practice to learn how to sharpen a bullet point tip on a drill bit. And I have one here. I have several here, but I wanted to show you one that's finished. Um, this is what the finished tip looks like. I can get that there. That has been ground with that a diamond wheel, and then uh, and then shaped a little better with another wheel, and then polished with a silicon rubber wheel with little diamond impregnated bits or grit. And I wanted to show you the tools. Now this guy here, as far as grinding these it's a it's a learned skill you know I've been doing this for about three years now making these bullet point tips and I'm getting still learning and getting better all the time it's it's something that it's a lot of fun to do and if you buy cheap drill bits in bulk on eBay it's something that's not expensive to learn now you see there's a little bit on that tip a little bit of a rounded edge before it hits that I haven't tested this one yet since I put that rounded edge on there but generally you see the rake on that that cutting edge is dramatic that is a very dramatic rake on that cutting edge so it leaves me room to to uh, manipulate that the actual cutting edge down a little bit because being thin like that, it will um, I'll get little nicks in it 
and when I cut into um, hardened steel, which I cut into grade 8 bolts with these things, every little nick leaves a rim inside the, a tiny little rim inside the, uh, um, the, the uh, die that I'm cutting. And those have to be polished out, and it's a pain. The more polishing you do, the more chance you, you run into of making the hole too big, which is something I, I do run into. Now, this is a 5.7 millimeter, which is uh, 22 caliber. But these guys run, these drill bits run small. Always measure your drill bits when you buy them. It says 5.7, but it's about 5.55 in actuality. So if you get everything right, and that thing cutting right on tip, right on point, and you're chucked up nice in your lathe, um, that'll cut a hole that's a little under 5.7 millimeters, giving me a little polish room to make uh, 22 caliber. This is what I use for swaging 22 caliber bullets. That's a 22 caliber tip on there. Now, um, <clears throat> like I said, I start with these guys. And uh, you can see the rake on that tip compared to the rake on this tip. Where is that focal point? These things are so hard to... This, this is not a self-auto-focus camera. This is a fixed focus. You put it in focus or you don't have focus. See the rake on there? See how much rake's on that one? And see how much rake's on that one? Huge difference. This guy shaves. Barely touch it into the inside of the... When I'm cutting with it. And I don't spin the drill bit. I spin the work. And then move the drill bit into the work on a lathe. I can do it on a drill press too, but you spin the work and then put the bit in and just barely touch it in there and it shaves very fine little steel shavings out of there. It works very nicely. But anyway, what I wanted to show was the variety of tool bits I use or, or um, Dremel bits, if you want to call them that. This is the diamond wheel, and this is, I think, a 30 millimeter, which is a good size. They make them from, uh, I have them from all the way down to 11 millimeters up to, I think, 60, 60 millimeters or 50 millimeters. And um, 30 is a very good size because unless you're sharpening a real big drill bit, um, it'll fit on there. The whole cutting edge will fit across that. And... Um, uh, it's it's the right diameter for a good runner at that speed, and that's a good speed to be running diamond bit, diamond grit. You don't need to run it fast because this stuff. I mean, obviously, it's it's a grit. It doesn't have to spin fast. I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how I start this, and I've been trying to get a video of doing this. First, I hold the. I gotta find that focus. First, I hold the uh, stuff in a general, in the general uh, position I want to use, and I put my fingers together. That's basically where I. That's how I rest. And boy, I have a hard time seeing that. This thing is so hard. This little tiny screen. If I wasn't on screen, I could do this really nicely. I try to get that inside. Cutting edge. I want to keep it um, pretty wheel, like right through here. Otherwise, it's very hard to get. Consistent. And I 
and I roll it in. Too much pressure on the inside because it'll cut through the weapon. But you want to do that later. Now, you see how that's gobbling? It's just gobbled steel right up. Now, I'm also messing up that tip because of, I can't see what I'm doing here, but... Quickly. Touch up that tip there. But, um, yeah, this is awful. I messed it up. But um, that's the best I can do with well, how I can see here right now. Anyway, um, after this, I get the basic shape with this tip, with this bit, and then I move to different bits, and I want to show you those and explain to you. I'm going to take this magnifying glass off of here. Now, here's one of the bigger wheels. I think this is a 40, 45 millimeter, I don't know, I can't remember. This might be only a 20 or 25, but you can see the different sizes. I put two, I stacked three together here because I was using it to grind with the edges. Now, you they call them cutting wheels. You can cut with the edge, like cut nails off and stuff. The problem is the diamond wears off real easy when you're cutting. You have to be very careful to use them as cutting wheels. And um, they say water is a good um, lubricant for them. And indeed it is. But it's such a hassle to use water to lubricate these things. I rarely do. I just wear them out because they're so cheap. But I like to keep the good ones from wearing out because there's a big difference between a good one and a crappy one. And this, this guy here, these guys here are about medium quality. But anyway... That's a couple different sizes. Now there are different types. I start out with that size and then I move to these guys. This is a composite held together by resin. Now they hold, um, they make them with uh, reinforced ones with resin. I'm going to put the magnifying glass back on my wonderful $10 thing here. Excuse me. Um, this is uh, just uh, stone grit in resin. And this also is a, considered a cutting disc. But I use the flat surface. And uh, th they work very well for the second stage of cutting to make it a, a finer cut and more uh, precise and detailed. Um, and these guys work very nice. There's basically two kinds of these bonded resin um, uh, wheels. <clears throat> there are these uh, that I know of. There may be more. There are these kind that are um, this color, this clay color. And then there's dark gray ones or black. And the dark gray ones or black ones are uh, finer finer grit and there's quite a difference between the grits so you know sometimes I use the black ones sometimes I use those then there's another type of <clears throat> wheel which is a silicone rubber impregnated with diamonds you can't see on this one probably but that's basically just molded rubber, but it's got little bits of diamond in there. Now, the light gray one right here is the finest of the, of the uh, rubber ones. They come in, I think, four different colors or five different colors, which are different size grit. And this one, my guess would be, is about, oh, 12, 1,500 grit, maybe. Very nice polish on steel. Now I'm going to show you some other ones. 
and give you an idea how I do it. Obviously, this that that one I just showed you is uh, for the final stages. I keep up my stuff in a box here. I'm going to move this back so I can show you this. I have this box. This is one box. I have se several of these with bits in them. These are most of the wheels. So you can see, I'm going to crank this up higher so you have a better vantage point. I tend to... I'm not a very good photographer so you have to bear with me um, this these are uh, different types as I change my glasses these are different types of wheels um, obviously there here's the diamond wheels here's the smaller sizes this is an 11 millimeter and you know there are all kinds of shapes and stuff I just have the wheels mostly in here this is a, like a ball edged unit but uh, I'm just gonna focus on the wheels right now they do also make stone wheels they're just basically grinding stones for a Dremel which work good too on in certain circumstances this is a very coarse this thing grinds up stuff in a very coarse fashion um, and it's not nearly as hard as diamond, so it, it burns itself up quicker. And you notice here I put two together to make a wider stone. And that's about, I mean, if you had a longer screw, you could put more than two on there. But And these are the, uh, the different diamond impregnated rubber wheels. The gray is the... Is the um, finest I believe it's then the the red or the green is next I think the green is next then the red and the black is the roughest now I'm gonna put the loop on that black one so you can see the uh, if I can find where I put that there it is so you can see the diamond grid in there See the little sparkles? Those are little diamonds. And like I said, this is the, the, the coarsest grit. The gray ones, they're so small you can't even see them really. So <clears throat> those are the different types of wheels I use. Now there are different arbors. You may notice. I have to put this back on again. Sorry folks. You may notice how small that hole is in there. And you may notice the hole in that is much bigger. And um, they make different size um, arbor screws. These little flat ones are the very thin ones. And the uh, then they make the heavier duty ones, the um, fatter screw ones. And I find that generally, um, the ones that have uh, Phillips heads are the fat ones, and the ones that have flat heads are the skinny ones, in a general sense, because it's hard to tell when you buy them on eBay. Now these are some of the resin coated. See how big that hole is? And I had to make a special arbor for this guy. These come in handy too. They're good for cutting. The bonded resin ones are good for cutting. Now this is also, these are also resin. Um, but these guys have little smaller holes. So after a while you learn all this stuff and this stuff is so cheap you can experiment you can think well I don't know if that's exactly what I want buy it because you know I think I paid two dollars for that whole tube of these guys two dollars for this I think I got these free right here 
because the guy miss advertised them. I bought them for a certain arbor that he said they were for and they didn't fit. So he gave me my money back and then I made this special arbor for it so I could use them. So this stuff is cheap. These guys here, I don't know, you know, you're looking at a bunch of them for a few bucks. And um, these are the different those bonded resin ones. There's the black one. They come in these little packs. You can get those at Walmart or hardware store made by Dremel and pay probably $12 or $8 for a little pack like that. But if you buy them on eBay, you can get a pack like that for a buck and a half maybe. And here are the ones with the wheels with little holes, diamond. And again, the holes don't signify better or worse. Some of them with holes are good, and some of them with holes are not as good. They all work. They're all pretty good. You're not going to go wrong buying any of them. But when after you buy them for a while, you'll find that there are differences in quality. There are differences in quality. And um, there are all different kinds of tools you can use. But basically... Those are the basic wheels I use for Dremels. And these um, rubber ones, you can shape them into whatever shape you want. Just hold a diamond wheel next to it and, and shape it. I'm going to show you a few other ones that aren't wheels. I wasn't planning on doing this, but there's some more rubber ones here. Now, I don't even, I'm not even sure if these are diamond impregnated. They cut like they are. But, um, I don't know if they advertise them as diamond impregnated. They've got all the different kinds of them you can see here. Mostly bullet point I, I buy. And these guys, you take shape. You can, I, I mold the shape to what I want. You can see here. I have one molded like a cup for certain operations and they come in different sizes, different shapes, cylinders. These guys are a little more expensive. It's harder to find these cheaper but uh, and they, they, they wear out quick so I tend to be more careful using those. Then there's these all different kinds of styles and points and stuff that you can buy of diamond tips, which are all good for different purposes. But uh, I just wanted to give you an idea what I do with the uh, wheels. So um, then they have these, they call them, generally these are advertised as dental, but basically they're just cylinders and they have a little a little arbor that sticks in there and they work very very well and they have obviously the stone ones which I don't use too much but they, they have their purpose and they have the ball ones the different ball types sizes diamond coated ball ones those don't work as good as you might think but they do work so that's what I wanted to show you guys um, I wish I could show you all the things I do with with those. Now here's a carbide. I'm going to put the magnifier on with for that, just to show you some of the work you can do with these things. And you can be creative. They're cheap. You know, I, these carbide bits are are pretty expensive. I think I bought six of them for sixteen bucks at. Uh, Harbor Freight. But see how I cut that tip there? Um, I experiment a lot. And I have a mini lathe and it's hard to part with a mini lathe part using a part, parting tool. So I uh, basically shaped that tip the way I thought, well that, that should cut. And that's carbide. You know, that the, the diamond just grinds right into that like it's nothing. And no, nothing else will cut that. I mean, a certain kind of stone, they call them green stones, I guess, 
will cut carbide but diamonds like I said they, they go through them like they're not even there I wish I had some more of those ones here to show you um, and I buy everything cheap when you buy cheap stuff you can experiment with it like this guy here this was two dollars for a carbide but it was 10 millimeters in my machine will only hold eight so what I did was I put it on a vise and ground it down with an angle grinder and straightened it out now I have a carbide cutting bit now this this tip the cutting tip flat like that. that's exactly how the red one was but I cut the red one um, I ground the red one to cut better and it does indeed I can actually part with that on a mini lathe I'm trying to find some other stuff here that I sharpened on there but um, you guys that's um, basic toolage for the uh, um, Dremel I just wanted to show you that because there are very few guys that use Dremels like this they use them, but, but uh, they're so handy for stuff that you basically you can't do stuff. Do the kind of things with other things that you can with a Dremel. And, you know, you can spin stuff on a lathe and cut, cut it with a, with a diamond also. Like, um, you can, you know, have something spinning in a lathe and, and start grinding with this to face it or whatever you want. Now, you got to be careful with that because the little particles get all over your lathe. But take this back off so your eyes don't go nuts. Um, and that's what my lathe is right there. And I've done a lot of work, you know, putting the grinder up to that. Um and then cleaning it well after I'm done. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the things that I do with a Dremel that other people don't do. They're very versatile tools.